Help yourself to that right there. That's uh, one of our affiliates. Yeah, don't mind if I do. You taken CBD before? I know no clue what it is even. What is it? So CBD is from hemp. Is it so sort of like K2? No. no. <laughs> is it synthetic marijuana? Because I love that. Does any... Nothing better than nausea and passing out. Well, that's what the bath salts thing is. Not actually bath salts that are... A zombie-like state. It, it gives it... people the zombie-like state where mm. they go off and eat people's face or... Eating a face seems to be high on the priority list when you're on these things. Taking off your clothes is big. I think it's you, you just your body flushes and, and you just are a little less inhibited. Or just being from Florida because all these cases seem to happen down in Florida or it's the heat that drive people crazy to ingest the you synthetic know, marijuana. I think that you get down to Florida and first of all, it attracts people that are running away from something. Uh, and, you know, retirees who don't have to and people who are just cutting loose. So Florida and then the natives are weird anyway, <laughs> the ones who are around. So I, I think it's like uh, when you get to Florida, it turns into like the whole thing is an amusement park. The whole state. I like to look at it south as wild, of Ocala, wild west. you know, and, and then even like what the wild west. It's, it's like the to today's wild wild west. Like you explain people escaping things uh-huh. and trying to move away yeah. and get away. Right. And plus, anything goes down there. It's a little more lax in terms of rules and what you can do, what you can get away with. Yeah, yeah. They're kind of used to pushing the boundaries, pushing pushing the boundaries <laughs> a little bit, making it uh, a fun place. It's supposed to be a fun place. That's the whole idea, right? Of a tourist. State like it's that. A, it's a full round amusement park. You don't just have to go to Orlando to get away. No, you can go to uh, you know St. Augustine, and uh, <laughs> it's actually not a good example. I've been there though. Well, I mean, Fountain even, of Youth. Even the Panhandle is a place that people go for spring break. But I love it. Pensacola. You love it? Love it. I've been to Pensacola. I, I skinny dipped in Pensacola with. Well, she did. <laughs> And I watched, and I was there. But I guess I did because I'm, I guess, you know what? I was with this girl, and she had red hair. And, I mean, like, she – it this this was years in the making, okay? Because, I mean, like, we had met in Nashville. She was doing an open mic – or I was doing an open mic, and she was sitting there with her notebook. Was, you know, whatever, open mic a show. And uh, <laughs> this girl – I just started talking to her. I never do that. You know, I started talking to this girl. And we got along. I didn't even get her number. Just remembered her name. She left. Goodbye. We really hit it off, I thought. A couple of weeks later, I'm in Nashville again. And I am looking up and down the strip through all the bars and then, like, in downtown and everywhere. And I stopped at about four because I knew she was a bartender. That's all I knew. She was a bartender somewhere downtown. I forgot the name of the bar. Walked in. Couldn't even remember her name at that point. I think it was Ashley. And then so I walk into this bar, and there she is. Finally, like, the fifth one I go to. And she goes, hello, Pat Dixon. <laughs> she remembered Fuck. me immediately, my whole name. And then for years, it was cock teasing, you know. And then, uh, so this was a long time in the making, you know. So then I went down in Pensacola, and she's like, oh. she takes off her top, she takes off her bottom, she's swimming. There's nobody in the water except us. It's September, but it's still nice and warm. And I can see her red bush Ooh. through the. Ugh. <laughs> What's the matter with you? <laughs> You people, man, 28, you got to have it all cleaned no, up no, for no, you? No, or no. is it the. I'm thinking it's Pensacola, how dirty or how clean the water actually was. It must have been really, oh, really, really clear. Like a bathing suit is going to hold anything out of a hole <laughs> in a woman. Whatever. So maybe you have a point. I don't know. But it, it seemed pretty nice. I, I mean, I'm looking through. But we're swimming, and then there's these jellyfish, you know? And she's like, don't worry about those. Those are the kind that don't sting. Well, she was wrong. She was trying to conjure up this thing where the jellyfish don't sting. You know how you ever know these like spiritual type women who do things like that? They use all these herbs and stuff Mm -hmm. and they do ceremonies and they're kind of on the outside and you go, How do you make it without a job? And then (laughs) they tell you things like the jellyfish these are jellyfish that don't sting. And you believe it even though you know it's not necessarily true. She's not a a freaking marine biologist or something. She doesn't know anything. She's not even a fisherman. So this thing wraps its tentacles around I mean, so close to my scrotum. I mean within a tenth of an inch of my sack. And uh, so I get out of the water, and uh, the one thing is it was really easy to pee on it. And that really works. Really? Because it's right there by my sack. Is she going for a squat? Because I mean, the way girls pee, I mean. No, I peed. Oh, you it. peed. Okay. I peed on myself. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even need her urine. <laughs> <laughs> I was mad at her. Anyway, it ended up great. We never saw each other again, you know, so. Well, I was going to ask how old the story was because. How old is the story? It's about six years old. Because how you can connect with somebody. I didn't even think six years. Well, six years ago, yeah, I wasn't even using online dating. If I wanted to find somebody or social media, like, you really went out there 
went on the really? trail to find her. Really? Was- I used it uh, back uh, longer ago than that. I used, uh, what do you call it? I-, I met a girl on MySpace. Had a long relationship with her. <laughs> I met women on MySpace and Match.com because I was traveling doing comedy. Mm-hmm. So I just put, you know, they, they want to know where you are, where do you want to meet women. I said, within 20 minutes of anywhere. And so I'm meeting women in Kansas and Houston and shit. I mean, that's what I used to do for traveling myself. And actually, the girl we just had on our show, she did a whole uh, social experiment called Tinderella, where she went out there and connected with all these guys. And she actually got one of her former partners to give her a list of all the girls he had sex with. And she went out across the country and got in contact with these people and asked them, you know, what do you think about this guy now? What do you think about... Uh, she went on, like, an ex-girlfriend tour? Yeah, with, with, with the guy who oh. gave her the list. And, and is she considering dating this guy, or is she already dating him? They already dated. No, she's married now, but... Oh, so wait a second. This woman's already married, and she took off with an ex-boyfriend on a Tinderella tour to talk to all <laughs> his ex-girlfriends? I'm really? Pre- I'm, I, I, this guy has a very... This woman has a very permissive husband. Or, I'm sure she did this before she's married. I can't actually speak on that. Okay, well, who should I ask? Because it's fascinating. It's in the last episode. It's in the last episode. Okay, I'll check it out. Episode 66. She wrote a book. She did an off-Broadway play, sold out all the shows. She's trying to throw this in a bigger venue uh, for the Off next Broadway season. Off-Broadway play? She was definitely fucking that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that she had well, to well, be. Well, that was the thing. In the first episode, or the first story, one of the girls I found, they had a threesome all together. I mean, that's in the book. That's out there. Oh, okay. Oh, so it's that kind of book. Yeah. It was yeah, my wife wrote kind of a book like that. Unwifeable. Unwifeable. Un- <laughs> it's about all the things that made her so unwifeable until she finally uh, met me. Was and it then met I'm you like, okay. I'm, yeah, at the end of the book, it's like uh, I'm, the, I'm the one who says yes to all this. And, and, you know, say yes to distress. I said, why not? We've been married three years now in November, and I love it. She's, I mean, love my life, blah, blah, blah. I mean, there's no way to express it so that anybody believes you. Nobody ever thinks you know what the fuck you're talking about when you say these things. I've been married twice before. So, uh, you know, once per decade, 20s, 30s, and 40s. And now uh, with her, yeah, it's, it's kind of a living nightmare, but in a good way. Like, I'll put it this way. I don't enjoy it, but like, uh, and, and for instance, my first wife left me and I left my second wife. But if this wife tries any shit like that, I'll kill her. I'll just <laughs> murder her. And I know how I'm going to do it, too. With, uh, you know, like the fingernail clippers, they have that little file. You can twist out and mm-hmm. just stick it right in her throat. And then if anybody finds her, they'll just think, oh, it's a weird fingernail clipping accident. Mm. It's the perfect murder. Well, you've had 20, Brandon. T- two or three decades to plan for this, so <laughs> you know. Well, I've only had a wife that I wanted to murder uh, two out of the three times. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and a girlfriend wanted to kill me once. You ever have one of those? Mm. They, they you have, they, you have. They haven't gone me. through it that. No, yeah, they, they, they definitely they, hated. I, I can tell that you're alive. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> they, they didn't. They did not execute the plan. Well, I mean, I'm sure you get plenty of ideas from your show, Crime Report. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, I mean, you know, ideas. I, I'll tell you the best idea that I got out of Crime Report is if you ever want to kill yourself, this is a great way to do it. This has been done. A guy mm-hmm. in, in the Bronx had a Honda Pilot. Okay. You know the Honda Pilot? Old SUV they used to have the pilots, right? Exactly. Okay. And he uh, had a chain as well. And so he um, attached the chain to a pole, and then he uh, wrapped the chain around his neck, and then he just hit the gas and drove past the pole, or the pole was behind him, I guess, you know, but he, maybe not so because he had to get his speed up. I don't know how fast he got up to, but it was fast enough to cut his head off Completely and sorry. then send his headless body through the windshield. <laughs> to land in front of the car and then the car you know of course hit another car and uh, that was the end of that I so just, it was a strange thing to find around 6 30 in the morning i'm sure in the bronx uh, it was like 2011 i believe when that happened i was hoping longer ago but no well the honda pilot you know it couldn't have been like too long ago <laughs> i don't think they make those anyways yeah it was isn't that a great suicide though isn't that a great creative kind of like this will make you think take this world kind of a suicide well should we be thinking about that, or is that really the guy who's committing suicide, or a guy or girl who's committing suicide to say, like, oh, this is, I'm going to really leave one behind. Well, people, it's a work of, gonna talk about this it's a one. work of art, you know? I mean, like, you, if you do something like that, you, you don't intend to just die. Mm. You know what I mean? There's more to it than that. There, there's, why would you put that much effort into it? You could just eat a bunch of fentanyl, or you can, you know, whatever. If you just want to be dead, there's a lot shorter ways to get there. This mm. guy had a Honda Pilot, <laughs> and put a chain around his neck. 
figuring that that would cut his head off. I mean, maybe. What if it didn't? You know, I mean, what if what? Speaking what if so? Was a malfunction with the car and the brakes lock up and he can't go? You know, and, and it like stops him too soon. He's only paralyzed. What if the cha- what if he's not going fast enough for the chain to actually like snap his head off? It's crazy. But you can't even legally commit suicide. So the fact that he's going out there and doing this, I think you got a good book right here. Can't legally do it. In some places. I guess so. I mean, like, uh, what's the penalty though? Life imprisonment. <laughs> <laughs> it's like being paralyzed. It's just. Same thing. Right, right, yeah. I guess some people have meaningful lives afterward, but I don't know if I would have the guts to do that. I think I'd be one of these people who just gives up. No. I'm a, <laughs> I've not, given up now. <laughs> I'm not a believer in religion, but still there's something to say, no, 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 i got to ride this one out. i got to see this through. i gotta, I got to make something out of life. i got to make something out of it. i got to accomplish this, and i got to get this done and that done. And there's this weird sense of the rock and roll syndrome or rock and roll artist where, like, no, no, I'm invincible, haven't died yet. Done mm-hmm. a lot of crazy things. True. Put myself in some crazy situations. Oh, yeah. Made it through. So, yeah. Nope. And you can do a podcast when you're completely paralyzed, too. I mean, you can do a podcast without even, from the neck down, you could be paralyzed and do exactly what you're doing right now. You're just making it more. <laughs> <laughs> making it more appealing. <laughs> this uh, Your logo reminds me of uh, the Warner Brothers uh, logo, kind of, you know, ah. with, the, with the circles and the, you know, it looks like that stage thing. It's very nice. The uh, inspiration came from. Uh, a mixture of Hunter S. Thompson, his uh, quote about the edge. The edge, uh, the only people that really know uh, where it is are the only ones who have gone over. Mm. So, uh, you know, taking this bus, Ken Casey. So that's you guys, huh? Yeah. That's Denver. Going over the edge. Yeah. yeah. Going You're off yeah. and finding those characters who've also gone over the edge and sharing those conversations and bringing back. Uh, people with keys and ray guns and cats and saddles. Well, and I, head, I mean, like, I'm trying to see. <laughs> <laughs> bicycle riders. <laughs> It's like a, the most random assortment of objects you have to represent going over the edge. Well, so oh, that's Mary Poppins, I see. Exactly. Yeah, with, that, with the umbrella. Yeah, it took me a minute. First one I was going to point out right there. And, <laughs> the then that's a, the and that's a pig, a flying pig? Yeah, for a kid. So, oh, I see. So it's like a tornado that just sweeps everything up. You're just out of the portal. And there you are on the bus. What's well, a very nice logo. Very, very crisp. Very. Although, wait, which one are you? You're the right one, right? The one on the, the driver's seat. Uh, yeah, and who's this seat. other guy? The other guy is the uh, he's the one playing poker in the World Series of Poker right he now. He just uh, yeah. How's he doing? He did not make it to the cash day. I think cash day is like day four, or day five. Okay. And I think it's in day six today. We got a few buddies that are uh, still in the cash. I think they're like minimum getting fifty to eighty thousand dollars right now. That's amazing. That is great. Yeah. I knew a guy who was at the final table. Or really? Was he at the final table? He was about to make the final table. He was in that tournament. And he was in the lead. He was in the lead. Maybe it was. It, ha- it couldn't. Have, they had the final table always on TV, right? Not always. They'll do like a highlight table throughout yeah. the tournament. So right. There's people that got a lot of chips or are doing really well, or they're... so it couldn't have been that. But he was, he was there. You know what I mean? And he was in the money by a lot. And he got kings. Do you play? Yeah, yeah, yeah. big player. So he had kings, and uh, I don't remember the exact thing that happened in the hand, but his kings got busted. And he had a lot of money in there. Mm-hmm. I think the other guy doubled up. Next hand, he gets kings again. All in. His kings get busted a second time, <laughs> and he's out. But you can't cry any tears to the guy a couple hundred grand or something. No, you can't. It, it's crazy. We have another buddy. Uh, he just won World Poker Player of the Year. Going to have him on the show. We'll go back to Florida. Wow. And, again. World Poker of the Year? He won David Peters. And he's just watching him play. And I'll catch him on TV. You see those uh, poker stars at night games uh, on NBC. You're fl- on a flight, and they're showing a poker game. Right. And he's on there. Yeah. It's 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 uh that stuff really exploded on TV. The kind of poker I like to play too is you ever play like a dealer's choice game? And I'm not talking about the kind of wild card games that are so wild they're not fun. There's like a limited selection of them. This is like the kind of stuff my dad taught me, and I was like, well, this will never come in handy. Then I met these guys here. It's an Eddie Brill game. It's been going on for like 25 years. Eddie Brill. Eddie Brill used to book Letterman, and uh, and he's a comic. And now he uh, it just does that. But it, like the game was going on at his house. Every Monday, after I moved to New York, I don't know, maybe a year and a half in, started going to his game every Monday. At first, I'm losing, I'm losing, I'm losing, you know. Mm. But then I pretty much figured it out. And now I break even, you know, but... <laughs> Well, it's it's a limit game, you know. So, like the most you can make is two or three hundred bucks. No, I never played. Eddie One Brill. night I made a little over four hundred. Oh, Eddie Brill is the guy's name. Okay, okay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he 
he hosts the game. I'm thinking of style of game right I now. I was going to the Eddie Brill game. You know how to play it? Uh, something that your dad taught you. It was like, oh, shit. Well, I'm talking about fun. games like, uh, you know, where you have the five cards out in the center and you turn them one at a time, betting interval and stuff like that. Mm. Everybody has five cards in their hand. We play a lot of Omaha High Low. Gotcha. Play a lot of, uh, there's something called 3 2 1, which is a card passing game. I know one called Pineapple. What's that? Can't remember in particular, but it's something where again where you're kind of hiding the cars in Omaha. You can see three, or you start off with three cards, and the rest uh-huh. are face down. You're flipping them over, okay, uh, slowly and slowly. Like one of these no peak games. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, at least you go to limit games. See, a lot of my friends because they are these, degen- they're degenerates. Because yeah, they're junkies. They're, they're bad. We go to uh, dinner, and the dinner might end up being there's 15, 20 people. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe a thousand bucks. Oh, let's play credit card roulette, everybody. Everybody, throw your credit cards in, and whoever's cards last takes the bill. Well, that's just silly. I mean, they can afford to do that. That's just silly. <laughs> well, how much is the bill? A thousand bucks? Sometimes it's been, I mean, that many people. They go to a nice restaurant, and like, oh, everybody, just throw your cards in. Let's go for it. I'm like, I'm, I'm out. I'm, I can't, can't, can't be a part of this. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, you know, if you pay, then you're going to be resentful because they're steal. all rich. <laughs> they're all rich. Rich people and money are weird. Because they don't think anything of money, except if it's their money. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. they don't really – like, I know a guy who's a millionaire, you know, a couple times over, and I worked with him, and, and we went to Subway, and I, and I was like, hey, lunch is on me because of something. You know what I mean? Something he did for me or something. Small thing. And he's like, hmm, well, okay. You know? <laughs> for me, buying a guy a Subway sandwich, I'm like, hey, you know, a thank you. I care. Yeah, notice. And that's like, <laughs> I'm not buying anybody lunch, you know? And uh, But for him, that's like giving him a quarter. You know what I mean? It just doesn't register. It's Mm-mm. like, why would you buy me a thing that costs a quarter? Okay, big deal. You well, know, because he's so loaded. The crazy thing is when we we go out with them, it, it's even worse. Like, oh, look at that bridge. That's a that's a $1,500 jump off that bridge right there, right? You, you'd do that. P- people would jump off that bridge for $1,500, right? For fifteen hundred dollars, like we're walking by a bridge somewhere. It's, it's about fifteen hundred dollars jump right there, right? And, and and so they would offer strangers money they, to jump off the bridge. We'll make little bets like that, just like oh yeah, at this island right there. We're in Florida, and we're in uh, Edgewater, Miami area. Like oh that island, that's a. And now they're all into cryptocurrency. That's about one Ethereum right there. You'd you'd, <laughs> you'd swim to that island for one Ethereum. I throw in two Ethereum right there for that one. These people sound like douchebags. <laughs> Why would you hang out with these people? <laughs> Because they, they do. Pay. I have so much money, I'll pay strangers to jump off a bridge. <laughs> Ethereum? Okay. I've heard of Bitcoin. All right, there you go. Do you have any Bitcoin? I do. Yeah. Yeah. Still got do you some. Have, do you have like a whole Bitcoin or several of them? Uh, I got a whole. Yeah. I got a whole left. One whole Bitcoin. One and whole what, left. what is it now? It, it's like several thousand or a thousand? It's about 6,000 something as of today. Maybe okay. 6,400, 6,300. That's great. Can you look at it? Can you get it out and look at it? Uh uh-uh. uh. And hold it? It's all digital. They won't let you hold your coin? No. I want my coin. You know what I mean? Well, you can have a wallet where you hold that stuff in. I there. got an analog kind of, you know, background mold. What's Although I d- analog? Uh, What's analog? Yeah. <laughs> you know, the kind Teach of. Guy, me. Teach I, me. Well, analog is things like, like a cassette tape. Mm. Or like a, if I write in a notebook, you could, that you could colloquially got it out, call that analog rather than you know something digital sort of like precursor to digital i guess is that right that counts talking to you (laughs) (laughs) is this really live on that one Uh, oh on that one hey (laughs) man do we look that white yes that is ridiculous that's ridiculous why would you have this light on me like this because i think we can see me well you've been in new york longer than i it's like i'm a ghost what is this you look paler than i do I'm keeping my complexion now since I would I've hope. been up here. I would hope. Your complexion. Yes. Because then the humidity, you get the zits, huh? No, no, I do pretty well still. Hmm. Well, then where's, where's the problem with the complexion? Or just when it's you're not chill eye? <laughs> <laughs> How's your complexion in chill eye? Nicaragua. <sighs> yeah. What the hell, man? I mean, you've had some experiences, huh, down there? We did some crazy shit. I mean, uh, donkeys and stuff? Uh, no, a little crazier than donkeys. I think uh, one of our crazier things, we got access to a cocaine production house, and we got to get walk through the whole process. So. You guys are like the vice crew or something, huh? Yeah, we were our own independent vice you crew. You saw yeah. a cocaine It's on YouTube. It's factory. A, yeah, we got, got production. Uh, we got sent to a few locations. We had to ride horses, one leg of it, to get there. And then we had to go in a car, and secret location. We had to bag our heads or blindfold. We didn't have to do that, but... 
they got us there. And so up, what were these people like? How do you meet drug lords? Um, so it got, or is it just the foreman or something? It got like packed. Joe Lunchbox at the cocaine factory. <laughs> it was like a smaller size production. It's a job. <laughs> kind of, kind of gets made in. Uh, this one woman was just making it in her house for, uh, for the for the cartel. Hold on one second. Would you would you ever go to a place where they make cocaine? Uh, free samples. Okay, that's a yes. Wasn't free. <laughs> <laughs> that's a yes. You would go. Would you Would you go to such a place? Maybe. I don't know. Not me. You have to be out of your mind. No. What What good could come of that? Well, I learned a thing. Well, I could just watch your video and see that. There you go. <laughs> I'm not gonna, <laughs> but I could. I just don't. I, my curiosity uh, is definitely doesn't outstrip my fear mm. of things like that. Criminals are dangerous people. That they are. Actually, but they're, I mean, the, the kids came home. I mean, you at, don't want to say that while you're there. The kids came home at one point, you know. The guy asked for our phone number, you know, in order to, uh, you know, potentially do this uh, project again. They didn't think we put it on camera, though, so. They didn't know. No. So you shot it without their knowledge. Well, he just Great. thought it was for a personal. I, I'm going to have to get out of here, man. They're going to burst in here at any I moment. I think you're already on that watch list <laughs> already, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't touch drugs, man. I'm not a drug guy. Was I'm not it, a drinker, not a drug guy. It was a journalistic piece. A journalistic piece. Journalistic yeah. piece. So you figure that that kind of justifies everything. Yes. Just lying and stuff, and secretly shooting film. Yes. Hmm. That would be beneath my journalistic integrity. <laughs> I will do anything to not sacrifice that. Would do a New York City crime report. I never would do anything like that. I mean, like if somebody says turn the camera. Off. Now we did go shoot at the uh, Topless March, which happens here once a year mm -hmm. in August. It's usually the uh, Sunday after. The you know like International Women's Day or whatever it is that they have, uh, but not the one that happens, not the one that happens like in March or something. You know that day. You guys, you don't know. I'm not from the city. It's like, well, I mean, it's, like, no, it's international. Like, uh, remember when they had that uh, Day of the Woman, Day with no women or whatever it was? They had a day with no women, crippled the economy. I mean, it almost ruined the whole country. Thank God. I hope they never do that again because it was. <laughs> Not the trains weren't running, you know. the The clocks stopped. Some of them. Some I don't know why. Like, apparently, the women operate the clocks. <laughs> uh, you couldn't get any any lunch. Okay, was that the day uh, there was a bunch of marches, especially in Washington? Four dozen of them. Yeah, I went to the. They were saying I'm not talking about a small number. Four dozen women out of the say you know four and a half million women here in New York, right up there, protesting it uh, in front of Trump Tower. But anyway, the march I'm talking about happens in August. Really hot, and it's the Raelians, which is a UFO cult, a UFO sex cult. And they have a once a year, uh, they call it a go top, it's go topless day. And uh, you can go. And, and we went and marched a few years in a row. We always cover it for Crime Report. We take pictures and shoot film of everybody. My wife went... You know, she has a journalism background with the New York Post, and, like, she wrote Unwifable now. It's her first book. Unwifablebook.com. A lot of sex. And she, uh, <laughs> you know, she's just this tall, 6'2", blonde, kind of, like, you know, just really outgoing personality. Knows how to interview. Knows how to talk to people. People mm -hmm. trust her. And then, you know, sometimes she's a creep, you know? Because she's interviewing all these women and everything, and they, they, you can tell, you know, they sort of relate to her. If I tried to ask some of the same things, like you said, you know, it's like people react differently to different people. Mm -hmm. So, one shot, she's got you can, she's holding the camera on these on these girls, and she just leaves it for an uncomfortable amount of time because by then they've come to Dag Hammerschigold Park over on the east side. That's where they stop this year. Usually they stop over at uh, Bryant Park. And they're on stage, and she's pointing a camera at them. Nobody's saying anything. I mean, it's several minutes. And you see them notice her, right? They're like, and one of them says to the other, like, hey, hey. and then they look back again like this. And then they start just like looking really uncomfortable. They, their tits are out, you know? And they're like 19 or something. <laughs> and they don't feel very comfortable about this tall woman who's just holding a camera on them with her ball cap and her sunglasses looking like some kind of weird stalker. It's the best. <laughs> I married the right woman, you know. She sounds like a character. Yeah, we got especially, married at... Especially the creep part. We got married at Gotham Comedy Club. At the Comedy Club. At the Comedy Club during the New York Comedy Festival in 2015. And uh, we did a big show, charged admission, got married, 
so we charged for our wedding, you know, and did no gifts required, but just buy a ticket. Mm-hmm. Made like eleven hundred bucks <laughs> our wedding. That's the way to go. If you have anything that you can sell, like an event that you can make, why not just charge people for it? Don't worry about all this stuff with photos and all this stuff. I guess by the time you're getting married the third time, you're not thinking like, I'm going to find a really expensive cake. And not only that, but I'm going to find uh, you know, outfits for everybody to wear and match and shit like that. Like you got to bring like your that. own suit, too. I mean, Just, you're not going to go I, buy a suit. Everybody get the same matching tuxes. Or I mean, why? You know, get your friends. The community comes together, and they all bring something, you know. So we played music. We had fun. I got, got a friend of mine married us, and uh, we were all good. Especially if you're going after the rate of people just not being honest to each other or getting divorced. I mean, mm. there's no sense in investing in. Well, we intend to stay together, but we also, like, also, uh, I didn't want to take a night off. <laughs> so it was a way I could get married and not take a night off. Well, there you go. And then she got to be on stage, too. She used to do comedy, but she's not a comedian, so it's the perfect combination. She knows virtually every comedian in New York City, but has never done comedy in very much in the last few years. You, know? you don't want to be with a comedian. I've dated several, and they're just... Can I can I be frank? They're horrible people. Yeah, they tend to just be horrible people because they're competitive with you. I'm like, look, you're a girl. We don't compete. You're doing you, you compete with other women. I compete with you know comics. But that's how I see how it's relatable to athletics. I come from the athletic background. I, usually, comics can just pick apart and look at somebody's you know vulnerabilities or you know somebody's insecurities and just go after them. Very locker room kind of you know conversations and really? topics and. Not me. I, I, I'm a nice guy. Yeah. Absolutely. But, I mean, you compare it to athletics, like, like, so, yeah, but that's the thing. Is that, like, uh, say in athletics, you know, the men play the men, and the women play the women, unless you're in Texas and you're wrestling this trans beast yeah, who is just winning and winning. and w- I love that. I That makes me so happy. That makes me really happy to that see. That a dude can go wrestle. It's, is a dude wrestling girls? No, it's it's a woman, a transsexual woman wrestling girls. Maybe biologically born a man, I assume. Mm-hmm. Born a boy. But now just dominating. <laughs> shit like this is bound to happen. You know what I mean? It's bound to happen. But yeah, I know what you mean with sports. Well, I mean, like, Bill Burr's got a joke about that. You can go from being the 110th ranked person in the world on one set, one end, and if you become a transition to be a woman, now you're the top player in the world, or now you're just crushing it, and you're national champion. Unless you're, unless it's tennis. I mean, I know a man, a, usually a male tennis player is going to be able to beat all the women if they're really good, right? Mm-hmm. But if he's the 100th, I don't know if he's going to be able to suddenly beat Serena Williams. Well, I mean, John McEnroe got in trouble for that. I mean, because he made an honest statement that he thinks that the seven hundredth player, best player, guy player in the world could still beat her, or she couldn't beat. You see, he knows tennis, so I believe him. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's true. Then, see, I, 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 now that I think about it, I remember him saying something like that. You know what's wrong with that joke? It's on the line. <laughs> <laughs> From internship, that's a great joke. That was for you. Uh, yeah, I, uh, the thing about sports, too, and, and gender is that now you have Title IX, you know, which is such a, that was the way it started. Yeah. Title IX is like a, to, to have the equal rights for everybody. Like, and, and it specifies in sports that they, the, an in, uh, uh, like a, a university has to spend, the sports program has to spend the same amount of money on men's athletics and lesbian athletics. Lesbian yeah. athletics? <laughs> <laughs> no, I played college sports. So did I, you? What'd you play? Uh, college basketball. Really? Up at Syracuse. What position? Point guard. Yeah, and you yeah. were a pretty good shooter. My shot's gotten better. It wasn't the best back then, but uh. But now you're out, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. You go down and play in the cages on Fourth uh, on Fourth Street. I went down there a few weekends ago, and it was uh, pretty shit. Yeah. There was nothing over there when the, at least the time what? I went there. What? Mid- they got a, no, I was there like there was a whole scoreboard and everything that got set up. Really? Yeah. What time was this? So I know when to go. Afternoon. Afternoon. They don't they pretend they don't know me. I go by there and they don't even give me a look. I'm like, yeah, that's what I thought cuz they just, you know, cuz I go there and dominate. I have a a history of going there and dominating and they just they don't even acknowledge me. It's kind of pathetic. No, it, I have the same problem. Pathetic. It's being short and white. I got to go out there and like go grab the rim, make five shots in a row just to get on the court. And they're like, "Who is this guy?" Well, I guess he can play. Now you're in. Now I'm in, but I, I got to like, get let's in. Play first. credit card basketball. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, th- so man, that's pretty impressive, you know. You Thank go down there, yeah, shooting it up. I never did play college athletics of any sort. Nope. Went into it. 
I think the I mean Title Nine's one of the things, and then I mean you talked about earlier the walkout. I think uh, Brett That's Weinstein up at Washington University had to do that with like all the white professors or white, white, white people couldn't go to college or couldn't go to work that day. Yeah, and take care of their job. Or well, do their on, job. you know, on a practical level, you kind of go, okay, what? I can't go to work. Do I get paid? <laughs> on the other hand, you go, well, you know, I want to not have. Uh, segregation or be ordered around by another race. Mm -hmm. That's or, weird, right? Isn't that one race just telling another race what to do? What the hell is that? Or told not to go to work, yeah, because of the color of your skin. By a different race. By a different It was race. their idea. It wasn't a white person's idea. Or maybe it was. It's like a liberal white person's <laughs> idea. I mean, I, I don't really want to get into a whole political thing, but you can see, see different traits in different, you know, political stripes. Mm -hmm. Liberal people who are white are kind of like feeling... They long so much. See, they know that they've kind of had it okay, right? They feel as if they're a little guilty because, you know, their life has not been too tough. And uh, they go, man, you know what looks really fun? Victimhood. I love <laughs> it. And so they start owning other people's victimhood and, like, advocating for everybody just so they can kind of, like, get that, uh, you know, that the, the, the drip off Brownie points. victimhood, you know. Yeah. Plus, yeah, they like to... Show, yeah, the, the, the different victim groups just how, uh, you know, uh, aware they are of society and how, how uh, important it is to how virtuous they are, you know, and how they know. And my experience has been people in these victim groups, for lack of a better word, I call them that, they don't like th those people that are overly solicitous and trying to advocate for them. <laughs> they think that they're kind of like useful idiots and uh, sometimes not even all that useful. Well, I mean, to be honest, if they're dudes, they're just there to get laid. I mean, it's what the intention goes behind with it, doing anything. Which, what a pathetic way to get laid. It's trying too hard. It's <laughs> not it's not, the, it's not right. It's not right. It's not a good thing. It's just, that, that's not impressive to women. Especially if it's like for like white privilege. Like, you're trying to knock at yourself in order to uh, appease somebody or please somebody or get them to notice you yeah. or like you. By making yourself look down and look bad. That's kind of... How do you feel about uh, your white privilege? Have you checked it today? Uh, it's not there yet. Oh. Yeah, it, the, the red uh, thermometer is almost there. So you're, It's almost filled up. Yeah. If we just get a few more calls on the hotline... Then... Oh, yeah. Privilege everywhere. Uh, you're going to explode with privilege. The way I look at white privilege is the same way. It, it's, it's, like, it's the same way I look at uh, HPV, you know? <laughs> if I can't see it, and I don't know why I have it, and I can't feel it, I don't have it. Well, that's the thing with dudes. They don't know they have it. Unless they get that low-risk kind. Because <laughs> then, you know, eventually. But I don't know anything about that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm clean, you know. I'm clean. I'm clean. Say it a few more times. Everybody's going to believe you. Hey, they can see it in the subtitles here. I love how the subtitles on YouTube are not always accurate, too. Those, the closed captions, yeah. The they're closed they're. captions, right? Mm -hmm. They're kind of like... Uh, they get a, there's like one word out of every couple of lines that's just wrong. Oh, especially if someone usually in an amusing way. South American English and if you're just saying like Chile, you know, it Chile doesn't capture it. Do you do a Southern accent? Can you do one? Uh, I'll tell you what, I can do a Southern accent. I can. Sweet tea. <laughs> I will I say that I think that is the bee's knees. I really the bee's knees. <laughs> well, that's weird. We need to get some cornbread and some. Uh, Oh, I don't know, man. Like I said, I like lemon in my tea. They didn't uh, bring a lemon. She didn't bring it. Have you seen? If I don't get some, we'll be pissed. Darlene off. over at the Quick Stop over there. She is looking good. Is that her name? Today. Oh man, you're always stalking somebody. Uh, always stalking. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, one time when I was married, the first time there was a woman who worked at a Quick Trip, and I would go there and buy beers and cigarettes and stuff. And uh, eventually, I worked up a little thing with her. Ended up, you know, getting involved with her, following her home. She lived with this other guy. She was couch surfing. This guy was a weird cripple dude that, like, I mean, like, like Kane and shit like that, you know, I mean, but not that old. Weird really helped the cripple part right there. Now I got an image. Right. Just a regular <laughs> cripple guy. Fine. This it's was a cool. weird cripple dude whose house is a wreck and who, you know, you go, why are you, are you making your payments on this? Because this seems like a... Almost like you're squatting, you know, that kind of guy. And uh, I'm hanging out with her over there, and I look up after I'm sitting on the couch and propped against the wall in a way that you couldn't see it from the door, but you can see it from the couch, just in the corner, is a painting 
that I did in high school. Literally, a painting that I did. And I, this girl, I'm meeting her for the first time, just at this QT. And then <laughs> I go to her place, and there's a painting that I, I'm like, and it's huge. It's like a three feet by three foot painting. Three Not and a half. The, like the exact painting, or just someone the else? The exact painting that I did. Did okay. you sign it, and you could? Okay, I did, but I didn't need to. And I'll tell you why, because this painting was a pinhead a yellow, you know what a pinhead is? Like the, the f- circus freaks from the 30s and stuff like that, or been before. They have like a pointy head. You know the Ramones? They have like Zippy the pinhead. Yeah, yeah. So it was a yellow pinhead with, an, with like sort of a sort of like a fixed look on his face, like, like that. And he's walking down a staircase. He's naked and he's got a big brown dick and balls mm-hmm. walking down. It's called Pinhead Descending a Staircase. And I did it as a satire. Of this woman, this girl in high school that I had a crush on, she did this flowing nude going down a staircase. And so I did pinhead descending the staircase to get her attention. Lost touch with the painting. There it was. The guy sold it to me <laughs> for $20. Did he say, did the weird cripple man tell you how he got it? It came through some mutual friend. I think it was, uh, and it had made a couple of stops. So I had to kind of just guess at exactly how it came to be there. Where are you from? Where did, where did all this go go down? I'm I'm uh, I'm from like Tennessee or South Carolina or Kentucky or something like that. Wherever mm. I'm from, uh, <laughs> but you know I did a lot of traveling when I started doing stand up. Like so, performed all over the country, and I watched a lot of TV when I was a kid. So I never really. Uh, my parents, you know, they're pretty country. I guess mm. you could say that. So that's where I'm from. You could blend in down there. Yeah, I, I, well, that's the thing. I didn't really blend. There, you know what I mean. My parents blended really well, mm-hmm. but I never really feel like I fit in there. You know what I mean. I can talk to these people. I know what they, you know. But like, uh, in my town, the little town that I'm from, it's a small town. You know, forty thousand people or something like that. People love to look at you like they don't know what the fuck you're talking about. They live to do that. If you say anything that's even moderately like out of order, the you know the wrong thing, even a little strange thing, they live to give you that look. It's like, hmm, like, I don't know about you. It's a judgment town. <laughs> you ever been to a place like that? It's like, that's I, how it is. I almost moved to a place up in North Carolina, Lake Toxaway. It's uh, about an hour west of Asheville. Coxaway? Lake what? Toxaway. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we couldn't move up there because um, one time uh, my dad uh, had a, and a few buddies, um, they went up there. Uh, it's a big uh, farmhouse. And they just said, uh, one of his buddies was black, and they're like, yeah, yeah, you can't uh, be bringing uh, guys like that around your house, you know. And I'm a ba- basketball player. I'm wearing Michael Jordan jerseys, so my mom just freaked and thought this would be a place where we have crosses burning in the driveway. You're not going to be able to date any black dudes, that's for sure. I can't date black dudes. I mean, if you can't date black dudes. Now, this is, uh, who told you that? The neighbor? Uh, yeah, a friend of ours that lived near, one yeah, of the properties yeah, you're nearby. You're bringing them around here. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, you got to get out of there. Yeah, yeah. That's for sure. That is for sure. When did you get into? Uh, what did you get into first? Was it journalism? Was it stand-up comedy? Or I don't know. I guess I studied journalism in college, and then I dropped out of college to like I was majoring in journalism. And I switched my major to alcoholism, and then was out of school pretty soon after that. I was married, and then uh, when I got divorced was when I started doing comedy. Like I, I, I had taken a class or something, but that's when like I started actually doing it. So it was like March of like '96. All right. Wow. Yeah. So it's only 22 years of doing this. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's all been working up to this moment. (laughs) No one to know a thing. Mm. Yeah. I mean, so that's uh, that's my story with stand up. Where'd you go? Where'd you go to school for that short time? Middle Tennessee State University, where they have a RIM program, which is recording industry management. Okay. Okay. Take the RIM program. You get out. You get a RIM job. I guess. (laughs) That was the joke from '91. (laughs) <laughs> Still gone. Need a rim shot for that rim joke. And, uh, yeah, it was great. I went to a couple years of um, some junior college or something like that, too. But uh, I, stopped, I stopped being interested in going to school because mm-hmm. I was drinking all the time. I had a friend. We'd meet up and just, like, meet in the fucking cafeteria after a while. And then I, it comes – here's how you quit school, if you don't know. Okay. You miss Thursday, and then on Tuesday, you get interested in a conversation with somebody at the cafeteria – and there's a girl around or something, and you're thinking, oh, wow, just when you're about to go to class, some girls walk up and sit down, and you go, well, I'm not going to class. 
And then you know that you can't really go Thursday. Thursday then is the make or break right there. If you don't go the Thursday after that and just feel like the most behind loser and try to start catching up, you've missed two days now. Say it's a Tuesday, Thursday class with, you know, these big long ones. That's how you drop out of school. You just talk yourself out of going that Thursday and you're like, oh, I'm done. And you don't just drop that one class. You just go, ah, fuck it. I'm sick of it. Helps if you're wearing a leather jacket, too. <laughs> What was this, early 90s? or Yeah, back in the, uh, what, what, what days are those musically? Because it's terrible. Nirvana? Nirvana? Pearl Jam? Pearl Jam. You a fan? I can't say I listen to them enough. Don't to like them. No? I distinctly don't like them. I have this argument with this guy, Eastside Dave, over Compound Media all the time. You know, that's where we do Crime Report. Mm-hmm. Like, the other, the, the other podcast started in 2011, and it's, at, uh, it's, it's a different thing. That's, that's like an audio podcast only. And then the one crime report is like video. It's the it's the one that this eventually became, and it goes international. We'll do India crimes. New York City crime report is only about New York, and I kept it real pure. So anyway, uh, uh, I was talking about uh, East Side Dave. He does a show there. There's about nine or ten shows, eleven. They're really good. Yeah. Uh, where did you get the inspiration to do crime report? Like, where did that come from? How'd you start that? You know, I'll, I'll tell you something. There was a guy a few years ago who was on a train, right? And uh, this guy came up to him and with a knife in his hand, right? And it's like the guy had been like walking around and banging on the conductor's door and stuff like that. And he goes, you're going to die. You're going to die. And he stabbed him in the face, right? And uh, the guy is a pretty big guy, and he tackled him. And then uh, I'll come back to that in a minute. So it turned out this guy had been... Killing people all day, like for the last 28 hours. He was on a killing spree, killed four people already. He's a Russian guy, like 20 years old, named Maxim Gelman. He was on PCP and stuff. He was like all whacked out. He was a drug dealer and a graffiti artist, kind of a, you know, sort of a loser uh, in terms of life, you know. And mm-hmm. so he had fallen in love with this girl, rejected by her. And now he wanted to just, he was so paranoid on his drugs that he wanted to leave the country thinking that the feds were after him. You know, he's seeing the black helicopters. And so his dad, his stepdad, married to his mom or whatever, but, like, he hates him, you know, and they hate each other. And it's just like, this guy's Russian, you know, too, so it's like they have this, he's Ukrainian. Mm-hmm. And, he, and he wants the car keys, he wants the Lexus, so he can go to the airport and get the hell out of the country. The guy won't give him the keys. So he goes and gets a knife. They're still in bed. It's like 5.30 in the morning. And he just stabs his dad, stepdad, you know, like 50-something times. OJ Jeez. style. He broke the knife. He had to get a the fork, you know, <laughs> the meat fork, and he stabs him with that. And the mom calls the police. I can't believe you called the police. Oh, I mean, my mom, you know. Yeah, he just fucking, you're murdering people. So then he goes to Yelena Bilchenko's house. That's his ex. She's not there, but the mother is. He goes, where's Yelena? She won't tell her. And so he kills her, the mother. Yelena comes home from work. He kills her. And in the meantime, he had run over a guy named Stephen Tannenbaum, who happens to be, was before he died, the world's foremost collector of Civil War tokens. He's in the Civil War Token Society. There's a lot of information about this. <laughs> it's really filled in for me. Anyway, so the guy's on a killing spree, killed four people, and then on the train. I mean, there's a citywide manhunt. You know, I mean, it was insane. The guy's on the cover of every paper. He saw his, himself on the paper when he's on the train. He's like, ah, hey, look at that. Can you believe what they're saying about me? And the woman's terrified. He's like, oh, my God, shit. So they get a hold of the police. They know now he's in the Times Square area on the subway. So they kind of, like, just lock it down, and he's trying to get away, and he's running through the tunnels like a rat, you know, and then he jumps onto one of the trains going the other way because, you know, it run across the tracks. And he, the train he gets on happens to be the one with this guy on it. You know, he's freaking out. You know, he's just he, he feels invincible at this point, I guess. He's already killed all these people. Everybody's terrified. Bangs on the door. There's two cops inside. He goes, open up, police. And they go, you're not the police. And he just walks away and whatever. And then he walks over to this guy sitting down. He goes, you're going to die. You're going to die. Stabs him in the face. There's a struggle for the knife. The guy stabs one time, cuts him in the thumb. And he has free reign on his head because he took him down with like a tackle. And this guy's bald, so he's just stabbing him in the back of the head. And he tries to take the knife again. Misses, catches him in the arm. Finally catches the knife as he's coming in, you know. Slams it down, the knife comes out. Then the cops come out and go, okay, we'll take it from here. There was a big case over it. They don't have a special responsibility to protect anybody who's being attacked like that. There's no prior arrangement, no, no special relationship is what it's called. 
and they have that, that rule, for people who have like a order of protection on somebody and get killed anyway, that's where that's supposed to come in. Fuck. So they misapplied it in this case because the whole city's looking for this guy. This is the guy they're looking for. And he doesn't kill this guy, but he injured him really bad. He lost a lot of blood. He almost died. He's the hero. His name's Joe Lazito. And so that's why I started getting into crime report because I would tell people this story around town. Happened right here in the city. I'm talking about a week later. A lot of people had heard about it. This is a great story. Very yeah. cinematic. You know, they're on a train and a knife and a mass, you know, serial uh, or a spree killer or whatever, you know. And uh, this one guy ends it all just defending himself, saving his life. Go in like full savage on him, you know, because that's all he's got right there. You know, it's like just defending his life. We well, got clipped four or five times, too. I mean, from the arm He got the stabbed hand. seven times. He lost a lot of blood. Yeah, he's, I mean, he had scars. You can look up Joe Lazito and look at the pictures. He's just like cut up. And so, like, Joe Lazito is like a friend of mine now. Like, uh, you know, we text and stuff. Really? Yeah. And he's been on the show a bunch. And, and, and he's just the greatest guy. Just humble and everything. Well, I mean, I think what people would want to know as well is, like, you know, that special protection clause or law that, you know, the police couldn't actually go help this guy. I mean. Well, they could have, but they can't be sued. He wanted to sue them. So he mounted this whole like, he had a lawyer who helped him for a little while, and then the lawyer's like, look, I've done all I can do. So then he had to file this paperwork himself. He had to basically become a lawyer in order to do this on his own. And it just, it took forever. It was a, a, as they say, a Herculean, is that the word? I'll, I'll consult Herculean, yeah, yeah, Herculean. Yeah, yeah. It was a huge task, and he did it. And then Margaret Chan, the justice, just goes, uh, well, you know, I don't have any doubt that everything you say is true. I believe it happened just as it did. However, they didn't have any special relationship with you, and we're not required to protect you, and so we're not going to hear this case. And they kind of made an example out of him. I'm telling you, the city law department will write a check for anybody who, you know, oh, the cuffs are too tight and all that shit, get yeah. made grand. But this guy who actually has a gripe, two cops in uniform, armed, who didn't come out because they were afraid the guy had a gun. And then... This guy almost gets killed, Joe Lazito, my friend. So, and then the bam, show is a comedy, fun. though. You gotta, <laughs> the show is funny. <laughs> it's about things like Asian child molesters. You ever notice how you don't see that many? They caught one in Queens. Asian child molester. They're rare. Are they? I don't see that many. Do you think? I mean, name your top five Asian child molesters. No, I would say from you know reports or things you see on TV, they're usually selling children into. Yeah, know. more like that. Yeah. yeah, this guy was just a. I think I know why you'll see a lot of Asian child molesters is because uh, their candy tastes like shrimp. Mm. And it's hard to get a kid in the van when you have shrimp candy. You know, yeah. it's like prawn on the back. It's like, I don't fucking want that. Need a be <laughs> better luck offering dick. A kid would rather suck a dick than eat, eat that weird candy. They can take it off YouTube now, I guess. But that's a joke. That's a joke that I wrote off of, uh, you know, reading this stuff. And I deliver it a lot better, but I mean, like we're up to three hundred some odd episodes now. Three hundred forty-three. I've listened to a few. I didn't catch the one last night. Did though, you really? With uh, the Bronx superhero cop. That's right. Yeah. How did uh, that one go? Ralph Friedman, who is uh, the yeah, he's the most decorated NYPD detective of all time. Man, what a pleasure to talk to him. Always. Yeah, he's great. He's been on the show a few times, and he's uh, just made a granite. He's in his sixties, and I'm telling you, you, shake his hand, and it's just like he's the thing, you know, mm -hmm. and. This is a guy who killed four guys, justified on duty, because the Bronx in the 70s and 80s was a completely different deal. I mean, it was like you're just trying to get order out of the place. I mean, just it's like a jungle that you're just trying to make roads in or something. You know, like It was everywhere you looked, rapes, murders, drugs, you know, prostitution. Bur burning the buildings, uh, collecting the tax. Everything on fire, yeah. yeah. Uh, what they call that? There's a, there's a word for that, something lightning. But uh, anyway... Uh, he had a book, Street Warrior, and he had a, a show on ID called Street Justice the Bronx. And he was on our show last night. He was great, yeah. And and that that'll be uh, that's archived right now at uh, CompoundMedia.com. People can get that's a subscription thing. I like that it's behind a paywall. Actually, if you don't want to pay for the paywall, fine. You know what I mean? Because like the audience there likes free speech, and it is free speech. I mean, like nobody's ever told me I can't say anything. Nobody's ever told anybody they can't say anything. Mm -hmm. there. It's like that kind of place. We're still behind uh, just on the bus name, so we don't uh, we don't have a problem with that. Right. Yeah, well, sure. You know, I mean, like, the, that's the way to be, you know? I mean, the thing is, you're out in the open. Mm -hmm. But back to uh, Ralph Friedman, I don't think there can be any, you know, 
when say a, a cop's ever going to be looked at like a superhero anymore or a superhero archetype because I mean they're just demeaned or diminished or looked at in such a negative limelight. He hates that. He hates that. Yeah, looked at in a negative light all the time. They've really uh, lowered the respect for uh, for cops. Everybody has. And it's too bad. It's BLM. That's part of it. It's a lot of like fake stuff sometimes. You know, like um, once you start a narrative. It's really hard to rein that back in. Mm -hmm. Once all the rioting is over anyway, and then you come in to investigate. You know, Eric Holder came in to investigate in, F in Ferguson. And he said, that stuff with the hands up, don't shoot, didn't happen. The black attorney general, Obama's attorney general, he said, that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter. Hands up, don't shoot still became a slogan. And all that tension and stuff like that that came out of that whole moment. The guy was doing his job. The cop did his job appropriately. He had no reason to be fired. And no reason to be in trouble. No reason to be suspended. The guy was trying to take his gun. But then, hands up, don't shoot. The guy lied to the press. And the press, they love to sell papers. A riot's a great thing for, for a network. Well, it's entertainment. I mean, left or right. I mean, all these news, news medias, if you read the little fine print at the bottom, like, we are an entertainment, an entertainment source. We're here really? To, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, I mean, journalism is a thing, Fox, of, the, the thing, Fox News it says it's that a thing of the past, you know. It's just a thing of the past. Well, I mean, everything is uh, taken with a grain of salt. I mean, especially when you go back and look at some of these, you know, these, uh, when you say uh, kids are, or men or women that get shot by the police or something happens with them, how much is the, cor if there is corruption in these, you know, municipalities, whether police municipalities or state municipalities who investigate this and they all come back a certain way? I mean, they how don't all come back a certain way. A guy in, in uh, a guy sitting in jail, prison for the rest of his life. South Carolina. Oh, oh, oh in South Carolina, yeah. Yeah. That 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 happened. You know how many uh, unarmed black men were shot in? I think either two, I think 2017 was the year that this woman was referencing. But it was either 2016 or 17, and she was going by the statistics. 16. And not all of those are necessarily unjustified. Mm -hmm. They're just unarmed. People do things when they're not armed that justify shooting them. And everybody does that. I'm talking about all races. It's unfortunate that cops ever have to kill anybody, isn't it? Yeah. But people break the law really, really bad sometimes. People fuck babies, you know what I mean? Why don't you start, go out there and focus on the baby fuckers, you know what I mean? Because that is really more of an issue. Right, people get more babies get fucked than, than unarmed black men get shot by cops. Can we look up that I one? promise you that. Somewhere a baby's getting fucked right now and it's disgusting. Am I wrong? There are babies. <laughs> I actually watched a documentary, uh, and the the kid the kid explained that happened to him. Yeah, so more well, more baby fucks in that movie than unarmed like people a, getting shot. Sounds like a real hot documentary you were watching there. It was about Hasidic the Hasidic oh, Jewish no. community. Was, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, out in Brooklyn, a yeah. very small percentage of it, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, that's that's a real thing. They got a, they got their own police force and everything. They really are self sufficient. I, Borough Park and all that. Do they get uh, hit with just uh, being tax exempt and getting all the tax exemption that they're able to make everything private, whether it's private schools, private um, ambulance drivers, I mean, private hospitals. Yeah. And yeah. they can get it paid for through tax dollars. Mm. I don't know. You know, I'm not. They, uh, they, they also have a thing called uh, Chicken Caporis once a year where you they, they have all these live chickens, and they bring them in, and then they uh, – their idea is to uh, swing the chicken over their head, and while they do that, <laughs> their sins for the year are passed into this chicken. And then they cut the chicken's head off, and they don't eat that sinful chicken, but they let somebody else eat. I think they sell those chickens. But that's real. That's something that they do down there. Well, the whole weird, I mean, to make it even weirder, I mean. That's chicken caporis. It's the whole thing with uh, kosher or even, you know, uh, yeah, Muslims with halal. I mean, it's kind of like the way the rabbi or holy man cuts the chicken and the way it bleeds out. They have to pray for it and stuff. Yeah, before they do that. I don't know. I mean, like, you know why they do that? Because, like, that's what kept them alive during things like the Holocaust when they're, like, walking through the uh, desert for 40 years or whatever. I guess there was no food at all then. But, uh, you know, whatever it is, if they're in a bad situation – the rules, those dietary rules, are made to keep them alive. Like when, in in times of trouble, that's how that that's where that came from. Well, I get the whole one with pork or even seafood. I mean, you're stuff gonna... that can turn. Yeah. Yeah. Was it, uh... more dangerous to eat. 
the cloven hooved animals. Ah, uh, what's the <laughs> name of that one? Uh, Trigonosis is the one from uh, eating pork. Yeah, yeah, is yeah. It's the one you can pick up from that. So, I mean, yeah, that makes sense. Sometimes you get so many green apples, you get the green apple splatters. That's a bad one, That's too. That's not, I don't think it has to do with kosher or anything. That's from my <laughs> childhood. But. Well, the, the weird thing is that, or what people don't understand, it's the Bible. It's a great storybook. It's you know maybe forty years was uh, exaggerated to make it make the make these people on this, this test this quest of this tale sound even better. You think forty years? An exaggeration. Wandering in the desert is too long to wander in the desert. No, I think to sell it. Moses though, had no idea where the fuck he was going. I think to sell it though, it's really good. I don't to think, sell it? Yeah, to sell it. Like oh wow, these people they they suffered in the desert. I read the book all the time. I'm reading it again right You're now. You're a huge anti semite, aren't you? I can tell. <laughs> you hate the Jewish people. Because why else would you say that their stories didn't happen? No, me? Are you saying the New Testament didn't happen? There was no Christ? I'm saying it's a really good story. I don't think, uh, I think it's a, it's more of a story. What do, you, what do you think is good about it? It sounds to me like you're using good it's a good fairy a, tale. as just like a... It's a tale. It's just like a little qualifier so you can say story, right? Like, just say, like, fiction. To, good to, fiction. To, to convey that. Good yeah. fiction. Have you read it? I, I'm reading it again right now. Really? You've read the whole Bible? Yeah. Wow, I've never read the Bible, and you don't believe it, no, but I do. I've read the Quran. I've read. Uh, I've never. I, I. You don't have to read the Bible to believe it. You just scroll to the bottom and click. I agree. And yeah. Like I'm pretty sure God's <laughs> not trying to fuck me on this deal. But uh, you've read the Quran. Yeah. I actually, lived in the Middle East for a little while too. Where in the Middle East? Uh, Kuwait. So that's pretty. Uh, pretty Muslim over there. Pretty Islamic. Pretty. It was pretty Muslim. In Kuwait. Ku- Kuwait. Some some people people say. Why would you want to be there? Uh, I love traveling. Uh, I had an opportunity to run a basketball club out there. You love uh, circumcising women? Uh, <laughs> no, it <laughs> does happen teeth? out there. It, it does Chomp. happen. There. FGM. It's, it's, Look, it's there crazy. Was, yeah, FGM. Why don't they call it male genital mutilation when they cut the tip of our dick off? Although, I'm grateful that it is the way it is. Believe me, I like it. I don't want to be uncircumcised. Mm. Anybody here uncircumcised? Get out. <laughs> no, it's fine. You're not, are you? You're not circumcised. No, I'm Jewish. Uh, you're Jewish? Yeah. What are you talking about? You're Jewish, but you said you uh, uh, you were living over there with the Muslims. Yeah, I had the I had the uh, idea that you were Muslim. You're not. You're Jewish. Yeah. Bar What's your last name? Reese. Reese. Okay, I believe you. So maybe you're not that. You're a self-hating Jew, which is not a full anti-Semite. Who's hating anything? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a lot of criticism in what you're saying. I'm just being uh, liberal. Don't worry. Okay. Now. What I was going to say about all this religion business escapes me, but that doesn't matter. I might have had something to do with circumcision, the shape of my penis. Yeah, or being. Can I show it to the. That that might get pulled off YouTube, but. It's so small that I don't think it it would register. You'd have to really zoom in, and we don't want that. So, what else do you want to know? Is this what your shows are usually like? Uh, Depending on the guest, yeah. Very similar to this? Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, it depends on the level of guests. I mean, a lot of uh, some comedians we've had on the show, they're... They get all serious and no, shit? No, no, they're very fun. They're very uh, open. We're talking, whatever, uh, conversing about what they want to talk about. Oh, damn. I feel guilty now. Are we trying to read stories off the... No, I'm just, I'm just looking just just something to do with my hands while I'm uncomfortable here. <laughs> waiting for you to ask something. <laughs> this guy got the... Look at this. Beaten with a pipe. Uh, Beaten with a pipe. Middle mm. East, I, I cannot. Oh, I know what I was going to tell you. You know, a woman jumped off the Burj Khalifa there recently, in like fifteen, two thousand fourteen. I should get outside on there. I've been there. I don't know how you would get outside of the of the top platform up there. It's some kind of an observation deck, and it might not have been on the tippy top, but she jumped off of like a very high point. Okay, yeah. Landed but, on uh, a restaurant canopy, I believe, down below, and like crashed into the patio area of a restaurant. She was uh, of dual citizenship, a couple different countries. She met a guy, and the guy was there in, in I guess, wh- where is that? Where, Saudi Arabia or something? United Arab Emirates. United Arab Emirates, yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's the tallest building in the world. Jumped off of it. And uh, because of this guy, because he was, like, jerking her around, she changed religions for him. She became Muslim for him and everything. And then, like, just wasn't going to. Wasn't cool with another wife? Was not. Just didn't. Two more, two more wives, three more wives. She just wasn't down rich for Rich businessman, you know, and she just had, I guess she put all her eggs in that basket and then said, you know, fuck it. I'm going to jump off the Burj Khalifa, whatever the fuck it is. That's a crazy tall place. Do you get crazy lo- tall. Do you get a lot of guff being more of a conservative-leaning comedian or I mean, a conservative podcaster? <sighs> no, not at all. People just don't talk to me. <laughs> they don't want to give me any guff. I, uh, You know what? I just like, uh, you know how I make decisions on like, I don't believe anything. 
until I see it as a fact. And I figure like anybody has a right to make their mind up out of the facts they see. So there's a time when that was okay. And I come from that time, you know what I mean? And if you're of a time where that's not okay, then you can hate me. But you just admit that, like, you're not cool with people thinking different things from you. And then you can hate me. Oh, that and people are just unsure. Like, I just don't know. It's okay not to know. It's, not it's okay no- not to know. Not to know until you have facts or until you want to go out there and uh, establish it. It's okay to it. not care at all. I mean, like, I'm not, like, you know. I'm not trying to force anybody into into anything, you know what I mean? Like, what's the, what's the point? You can't. This is the least convincible world that we live in these days. It doesn't matter. And really smart people think things that are different from me, mm-hmm. and I can acknowledge that. And it's so strange to me when I see that. Well, it's only getting worse with people not not knowing how to communicate and connect with people. Oh yeah. Because even the generation below us just hasn't had certain experiences, and it all started in the '80s or even the '70s when we, you know, wanted to pr- protect the way we raise kids, mm-hmm. and then started with, oh, we're going to go with our kids here, we're going to go with our kids there. You're going to have a babysitter here, babysitter there, and then slowly expand into social media. Well, you know why that happened? A few a uh, few good crime stories. Well, it was uh yeah, it was the kid. Uh, the, the first milk carton kid. Was it the one with um, America's Most Wanted in Florida? No, it was up here in New York City on the uh, east side. Oh, wow, what was that kid's name? First milk carton kid. Somebody look it up. It was, a, it was a, like a, uh, man, I, I, I can't believe it. He's a really cute kid, blonde hair, whatever, and just got killed. Just went out his first day walking to school and killed. Nice. And, like, uh they never found his body. He just All disappeared. Right, here we go. Yes. It's, yeah, Aton, Aton Pats, Pates, whatever. Aton Paz, I think is how you pronounce it. It's like an Israeli name or something. Aton Paz, you would know. Aton, very, it's very Jewish. Yeah. Aton, Israeli, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, he disappeared. Never. And so they, they thought this one guy did. Oh, it doesn't matter. But after that, people started going, okay, we have to stay with our fucking kids all the time because it's a big, famous, you know, disappearance, kid disappearance and murder. And so I don't know that that <laughs> developed into social media. I think that was more of a technological thing, wasn't it? Well, not in terms of involving the social media, but social media helped uh, uh, push this idea on that people do not go out and have certain, you know, they don't develop ways to have conversations with people or how to connect with people properly because they're just doing that through their cell phones. They're not going out and playing and interacting just by themselves. Even when I was a kid, I was like, oh, I'm going to go ride my bike and go off this area by myself and play in this park with people in the neighborhood. Well, that was just because you were weird. That was, uh, was, you know, you're out there like, uh, oh, wait, you don't mean in a bad way. You weren't avoiding anybody when you say by yourself. You were going to see people. No, I mean the kids, yeah, in the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, right. basketball. Those were the days. Uh, And you're a millennial. And a millennial. Which is weird. Well, and from Florida. It's hard to get around. The generation who comes after you. Z? Generation Z? Is that what it's going to be? Generation... They suck. They are going to be the worst people in the world. I don't even know if they're going to be people. It might just be like a human body and like a shark's head or something, just <laughs> eating everything that's good. As long as they're going to the... be terrible. Maybe they'll be good. Maybe they'll be better than you guys. I don't know. Just make sure you have, they have a name tag, so you have the right name to call them. You don't want to offend them. And don't give them any peanuts, you know, just in case. That's the weirdest one. Autism and peanuts. Yeah, peanuts causing autism. I mean. And and what is it? Uh, you don't take your shots, then you, uh, you need you need vaccines, or else you uh, if you get vaccines, you're a tart or something. It's all really up in the air. You know what I mean? It's like that's medical shit, right? So how come that's not settled? But it is settled. It's just Jenny McCarthy unsettled it. And is that the way it goes? I don't know. Jenny McCarthy and a few just. Uh a few characters like no 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 well it happened to my kid well, this is, is why i don't have kids you know what i mean this is why i'm i will ne- i'm so glad not to have children i got other reasons but yeah uh, no kids. just for me it's just decisions like that the vaccines and like worrying about where they're going and what they're doing and having to give them things and ungrateful former relationship with them am i a good dad am i not a good dad fuck that who's got the time i'm barely up to being a husband i mean i failed at that twice already so, I mean, like, if, if I can be worthwhile to just one person who's already an adult, why take on some vulnerable little, you know, thing that's going to die if I don't do everything just right? Imagine the responsibility. It's too much for me. I can't even drive a school bus around South America, maintain a relationship. It's You can't have, can't have any fun, that's for sure. You cannot have any fun. <laughs> the fun ends. Is. Yeah, so, yeah, I, the social media thing, though, it's mo- I think it's made people more adventurous and less adventurous. 
more adventurous in a way because you like you're leading out there with your thoughts and shit like that. You'll say things to people you would never say. People hide behind their anonymity on there. They create characters and avatars and shit. People have sock puppets, you know. Some people have like dozens of accounts to make a little army for themselves to like, you know, comment on shit like that. You don't know what the hell's going on out there. It's a snake pit. Well, it's a snake pit. It is it, it, crazy. I mean, she, this girl was telling us stories about how even seven year old girls are already off going and doing that, creating likes for themselves. And we're not even talking about political discuss discussions where people will go out or start attacking people or harassing people on these websites right. to do that. It's, do you think I'm pretty? Yes, you're pretty. <laughs> like that, you mean? And, but they'll go and create accounts because they're not get, uh, getting other people to say that they're pretty. Exactly, and then they go sign their own bullshit. <sighs> I mean, uh, women are pretty smart when it comes to the internet, I've noticed. A lot of them are pretty good at, at hustling and knowing how to like move shit around and stuff. And like they, they, Women, you know what they know how to do is um, sort of like raise support for themselves, you know? Because mm. they do that. Men don't ever do that. It's my birthday month, everybody. Like, you know, like people are like, oh, I broke up with that girl, but now I'm a-okay. You know, nobody, we're not doing that shit. So, like, oh, my God, you're so brave. You know what I mean? That's not a man thing. So, like, we're more like, uh, you know, just like, whatever, fucking fag. You know what I mean? Like, oh, broke up fag. What do you, what's wrong with you? Well, yeah, when you look at this. Grow up. Like a dude does an influencer or something on social media, you're like, uh, uh, yeah, I don't want to hear that. Oh, you're, uh, how'd you get good at that, yeah. weirdo? <laughs> yeah, I'm just here to, like. Like beam out a tweet, you know, and I don't look at any of my responses anymore. Really? Yeah. Has it gotten that bad? Well, no. It was that, or you just don't know who's who it's because because that bad is yeah exactly. It's one person maybe, or it's um oh, wow. yeah, you know, right. and it ruins my day. Not my day, but I'll spend an hour crafting the perfect response or some shit, and I'll win, of course. But like no, I you have these arguments with people, and you can be right about everything. I've had arguments where I just know, no, these are the facts. You're wrong. And it's just like they walk away. And like uh, you go, oh, wow, this is like this is really a waste of time. I mean, I got to like sort of solidify my argument. You got to sort of practice and figure out what you think. But on the other hand, you go, I'm, this is dumb. It's I don't so, even know who this person is. It doesn't happen in real time. You, you said you get that hour to plot. You get an hour to send back. Yeah, and so, even if it did, what difference does that make? You know, I mean, if you, were, if you could go on and debate with somebody, you know what I mean? They're just so stupid. Everybody is so stupid. Well, I think it's even stupid that we have a inter intellectual dark web that we need to have people to have uh, discussions online and for people to have conversations is like the biggest and best thing because it wasn't happening before. Intellectual dark web. You you heard that? I've heard that term. Yeah, and it's uh, it's usually it pertains to like a sort of mostly a type of conservative person, right? Um, it's like a group of conservatives. Uh, yeah. Even uh, the Joe Rogan, uh, Sam Harris. And how do they? Go, why is it the dark web? Exactly, I was going to say. What, much, do, they, do they go anywhere? Do they go to the dark web and do this? If they did, I mean, I don't think people would would, would be standing behind them for the things they would be saying because there's a lot of crazy shit going on, on the dark web. But they're just going because it's just that you know different for them to go off and say these things or beliefs to go and say whether it's like a guy like Jordan Peterson who's a part of this. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get what he has said that is controversial. I've listened to him a lot. And I go, oh, I can't wait to be shot. And he's saying, oh, the, the lobster is very similar to uh, men and women in many ways because they, for thousands of years, you know, and like, I'm, I'm, what is wrong with this guy that is so shocking? He didn't want to use the government's, he, he didn't want to be at the point of a gun told to, to change your, his adjectives for people because that's not the way language works. And I think that's a valid argument. And if he didn't want to use us, and, and he never said, like, Anything about, like, I want trans people to suffer, it's all so clear. You know what I mean? There's nothing wrong with that dude. He doesn't say anything wrong. And he didn't say he would never not use someone's pronoun if they came up and they asked him personally and yes. said, hey, this is my situation. And he said that never happened. And so he didn't. He just, but you know what? If the government controls language in that way, where they start saying, well, here's what you're saying for this now, and just making it up, which is essentially what they're doing. This isn't coming from... You know, language changes, like in increments over time little by little the word literally stops meaning actually and becomes just a lot that's a word i miss mm -hmm. literally if i said literally to you it would mean if i was like no literally then i'm saying something you know what i mean it's like no for real i stared at her for 30 minutes or whatever no completely naked literally not any clothes 
And now it's just like, you know, I am literally burning up. It's so hot in here, you know. And that, so it doesn't mean anything now. We used to have the same idea in our heads when we said that. So that's how language changes. Even though I don't like that change, it's legitimate. Mm-hmm. Even though it's out of ignorance, I support it. <laughs> but it's just somebody saying, here's how you'll use literally, because if you don't, these, these people are going to be very upset with you. And that's the law, and we will put you in jail or fine you. He was willing to go to jail for that. So that's at that point, you go, well, that's not really about bias or prejudice. That's about somebody who believes in a principle. Well, I mean, people don't realize that where that comes from is just because Canada doesn't have free speech. Like, There's nothing in their constitution that says they have a right to, to say and do or express who they are, what they want to be, or what their thoughts are. And that's the way it should be, because you shouldn't be able to just say whatever you want if it's going to hurt people's feelings, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean that's kind of the attitude. It's a, it's a whole crazy thing with hate it, speech. Even comics can't even go up there. There was a few comics who— Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I say whatever I want. Well, they've gone up there. They got sued for like uh, tens of thousands of dollars. For what? For if oh, people I know who you're talking about. You're ta- yeah, Mike Ward up in Canada, though, mm-hmm. yeah. in Montreal, yeah. but not down here. No, I'm talking about in Canada. Nobody's been sued here. No, yeah, not in the States. Still. Yeah, fucking United States, yeah. Fucking A. It's still good. Only place still was, good for something. Still the only place with free speech. Look, Donald Trump is the closest thing that we are ever going to have to a stand-up comedian for president. I couldn't agree I more. I relate to that guy going, like, when she's like, you've called women dogs, slobs, uh, and he's like, only Rosie O'Donnell. It's the way you handle a heckler. The whole place broke up. Be funny about it, you know? And, you know, he, he's, he knows what it's like to have a tough crowd. Great crowd control. The way he works he, the room. He knows what it's he know His timing is good. And he knows how hard it is to follow a black guy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> when he... Um... When Megyn Kelly was asking him that thing, uh, was asking that question about the Rosie O'Donnell, or uh, what you said, women are this, women are that. Yeah. He was grinning there for, for 10 seconds before she finished that. Yeah, I know what I'm going to say. Yeah, he sort of adjusted, you know, and he's like waiting for that half a beat pause. That's all he needed to, to break Hand in. gesture and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. It could not have been better, you know. I mean, I, I admire that. I guess not everybody admires that. I guess some people think that's like wrong. Well, I'm still to ha- have excellent comic timing. I'm still waiting for someone for me because I, I come I come back from traveling for ten months and I say, you know, what's happening? What's going on here? Is it well, this is Trump? Uh, I don't have a phone. Trump? Uh, <laughs> really? Well, I stay up to date. I'm like, well, what about him? Like, what what's so different? What has been passed that's different? What what kind of new laws or things? He that- is racist, right? Oh, what you mean when he was president when you got back? He, he's been president even uh, since I left. But I'm like, oh, well, what's so, what's so bad? Everybody's like, oh, well, it's it's good you got back because uh, things are going real. It's, it's real crazy. And what they now. say? And I'm like, well, what happened? They just they give me like a weird like, uh, it, it's bad. It, it's happening. I'm like, what? What what's what's so different? Well, the, the border and you know you know I'm like that's it's nothing. I, I still have gotten a substantial answer. And in no way am I picking sides. Am I on this side? Am I on left or right? I want someone who's going to go in there and do something great. I do laugh at his jokes. I, <laughs> but, what, but I guess what you're saying is uh, right or wrong, it doesn't matter what side you're on, these people that you spoke to who are freaking out about what's happening in the country cannot articulate an opinion beyond just a mute expression of terror. Expression of terror. Perfectly said. Yeah. It's, it's, it's this uh, hysterical... Uh, what is that I've heard it called? This uh, Trump, uh, anti-Trump hysteria. There's a word for it. I can't remember what it is, but it doesn't matter. It does. It's just so silly. It's ridiculous how extreme it is. Because, like, a guy can't be both retarded, uh, evil mastermind at the same time. He can't be, you know, stealing left and right and a super racist. And also, you know... You can't find anything in the past that, like, really, really clarifies that. I mean, like, people say, like, why won't he turn over his tax returns? Because he turned them over to the IRS, and I'm sure he's been audited every single fucking year, especially when Obama was in office, because he did a lot of that, especially with conservative people, and especially with people that he didn't like, like Trump. I promise you, his taxes are fine. They have been looked at with a fine-tooth comb by the people that are paid to do this. Mm Mm-hmm. So fuck you. You know what I mean? The government already did that. Why should why should I break them out for you? Well, it just is this huge, huge, huge web of the bureaucracy of the U.S. political system or the government that to really think that this guy, like you said, is the mastermind. 
is pulling all these strings, getting this to happen. He is getting things to happen. That's the thing. He moved the, the embassy to, to Jerusalem. They've um, been talking about that for years. He got that done. He wrote the, you know, I mean, like he participated to get the taxes thing done. Mm-hmm. He sa- he makes executive orders that, that happen. He changed the uh, policy on illegal immigration as far as, like, the, you know, the ban, the travel ban. Yeah. He cut 22 he cut 22 regulations for every one new one that they added 22 they were trying their goal was two and he made there was 22 so that's a lot of regulations out of the way and these are dumb things mm-hmm. well I mean <laughs> he's done a lot you know he met with Kim Jong-un that was big that's huge I mean and maybe nothing will come of it but it's like better than the ah oh, we blow you up you know all that shit that was going on the rocket man stuff <laughs> you know like we, we took shit off that guy forever you dropped the fucking mobe out there. Mother of all bombs. Yeah, you see yeah, that? Yeah. Oh, you might have been out there for that. <laughs> no, no, I was, still wasn't out there yet. It was incredible. I was back. I, it was so beautiful. But it, it's, it's like you can make his, you can read him and what he does now as like an entertainer. And you can say like, oh, well, well, the, the talks are off with Kim Jong-un. I don't think it's going to happen anymore. I don't think it's going to happen. And it's just him tweeting or making hysteria. And people go, oh, see, it wasn't going to happen. He's doing this. It's back on like the day of the next day. He's a PR man. He yeah. Knows, he knows. I mean, you know, he's he knows how to hype shit. And he knows how to uh, accomplish things. You know, it's like that dual business thing and, you know, the whatever it is. Like, I've never seen them, maybe they've always done this, but make their announcement of the of their Supreme Court nominee in a primetime, you know, network speech. I've never seen that before. from the Live from the White House. I've never seen that. And I think, wow, that's he does things differently, you know. But the main thing with him is just that, like, there's at least somebody out there saying shit that is like, you know, not sugar coated. It's not spoken in political code. You know, it's mm-hmm. not like uh, it's not all in metaphor. You know, and wrapped up in in riddles and and like this president speak. You know, well, I mean, like he talks like a guy. Well, just like the people, like you like you said, I come back to and they can't articulate an answer. I mean, that's what we've gotten in politics, whether they're congressmen or senator, senator, excuse me, senator. <laughs> <laughs> governors, presidents. I mean, you just don't. You, what, what are you trying to say? What are we actually going to do? Oh no, we want to do this and want to clear this up and get this regulation in and do that. And mm-hmm. you know, we've had stagnation across. Well, we're looking at that. We need to. That's being investigated and all that. Yeah, exactly. Stagnation. You're absolutely right. I'm just agreeing with you. Mm. And you know, what what is this senator? What is this congressman actually doing? Who are the interests that they're actually protecting? Are the people in their municipality or the people in their uh, I don't know the name of the people they look at. They, the people that vote them in. Mm-hmm. They're contingent. They're uh, anywho. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're not. They're not going in there and looking out. Constituents. Out. I think constituents. The word that's that. the one. That's right. Took me but a minute to reach back and grab that. There's none. Uh, there's none of that. There's no. There, I mean, and that's where you talk about private, um, you know, companies or corporations being able to go out and look after the these companies. I mean, the their interest are uh, favored by these congressmen or senators because you know, they help them, whether it is to get elected. Sure. I mean that's just how money how money runs thing and money uh, gets things going. Yeah. People uh, sponsor bills, they favor these things. The politician makes sure it comes in, and you know it depends on what people want. You know if they want a job and this guy's going to promise them a job, well then vote for him. You know I mean that's that's what all getting this person in power is is for you. Yeah, and unemployment's at an all time not an all time lowest since World War II, pretty good, right? Pretty yeah. good. And then people say, well that's Obama's economy. That was already happening anyway. Not, it really wasn't. Not not quite like that. Not to that degree, isn't it? Because I, I I don't I'm, no. I'm not sure on that. The economy one. is pretty sluggish for a while. Mm-hmm. Do you remember when Obama said, "I don't know where he thinks he's going to find all these jobs." He says he's going to bring jobs back. Well, how are you going to do it? And his answer is, he doesn't have an answer. Well, he's brought a lot of jobs back by doing the shit that he does. I'm not being a dick. These are just facts. You can read them, and mm-hmm. it's true. So I mean, if you don't like it, that's great. If you love Obama and you hate Trump, fine. But know the reasons you know i mean those those things are true uh people predicted the economy would collapse with the election of donald trump the whole world is gonna suck you know i i don't understand how a press the uh media can keep saying that he's attacking the media threatening free speech when they say so much negative shit about him who is controlling you here? What exactly are you afraid of if you can say, fuck Donald Trump all the time? If you can go on national television and say, fuck Trump. No, 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 it's not even uh, down with Trump. It's fuck Trump. Remember that? De Niro at the fucking Grammys. 
Even Where's like all this fascism? Where's <laughs> where where are the brown shirts to come out and just beat the shit out of Robert De Niro? It's, it doesn't happen. It's the it's it's tearing down Hysteria. language. Hysteria. We don't use language properly. Like no no one here is is Adolf Hitler. No one here is a fascist. No and, one here is a Nazi. And again, you can hate it if you want. You know, you can hate him, but like that's true. People say whatever the fuck they want about Trump. Well, they we, do. We just they don't say whatever they want. Look at like, Keith Oberman. You ever look at his Twitter? Uh-uh. Fucking Nazi. Fuck. 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 All this shit about Trump. You know what I mean? You in a, see, <laughs> you can't do that when you have a fascist dictator that that is in charge. First of all, a dictator is supposed to be popular. <laughs> and he doesn't have 90% of the people liking him. Didn't give him the popular lucky to, vote either. <laughs> lucky to scratch 50%, you know? His approval rating right now is about what Obama's was at this time of his presidency. Of course, he's on the way up, and I think Obama was probably on the way down from his whatever his high point was after he got elected, which was very high. Yeah, he went down most of the... Especially towards the 2014-15. Yeah, so, I mean, like, I mean, do you see my point? Is mm-hmm. that, like... The, these are just things that, tr- that are true. So look at what's true and then base your decision on that. You know, and I understand you have your emotions. That's great. You know, to make your decision based on that. I don't care. But like it's it doesn't make it right just because you really strongly feel it. I don't think racism is good. I don't think rape is good. But I think the Me Too movement sucks. The Me Too movement is a bad thing for men and women because it takes people from, you know, a position of uh, like, I don't know, uh, you know, rape is bad, of course. Sexual assault is bad. Sexual harassment is bad. But they are not all the same thing. And being a shitty boyfriend like Chris Hardwick is no reason for him to lose anything. Supposedly, by her story, a shitty boyfriend. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, where is the agony in this? Where is the smoking gun? You know, where is the moment you, you got raped and dehumanized and all that shit where we're supposed to all care? And now it's just the bar has come so low because of all this stuff. Because me too. Everybody wants a part of that. And really they can get it because nobody questions anything. There's a reason why you have, you know, <clears throat> you know, innocent until you're proven guilty and stuff. Magna Carta, shit like that, you know, mm-hmm. legal stuff that goes back forever. 1215, yeah. And now with social justice, which means not justice, you don't have to have that. You can just say it. And people are afraid of your buying power or some shit like that. Or they use it as an excuse. You know, we're going to boycott. Why won't anybody just go, nah, fuck that. We don't care. I wish Starbucks would just go, yeah, we don't care. This last, this latest thing, we just don't care. We don't care. We're not in the business of politics anymore. Goodbye. Like Chick-fil-A. I mean, they, they did it perfectly. Yeah, they, they didn't say anything. They're we, like, yeah, we got real good chicken. Jesus makes great chicken. Trying to chicken. sell some chicken. <laughs> Jesus makes great chicken. No, they are not an affiliate and sponsor. But I see we've run over time. But so. Oh, I sensed it. It's been a while. I wanted to thank you. Is very it still much. Tuesday? It's still. <laughs> thank you for tolerating me. I, I feel like I'm, I have a little fear of you for some reason. I'm afraid of this guy. <laughs> Him, I'm not afraid of. You, you're cool. Uh, so, what? Can I plug something or whatever? Plug, I mean, plug, Jesus Christ. Not Prime... me. Plug anything. <laughs> I just want to. Can I get in a plug? Uh, CrimeReport.nyc. It's basically, look, the New York Post, all these wild stories with jokes, and uh, it's a weekly show. It's myself, guests. I've had Bobcat Goldblatt on there. I've had some very interesting local New Yorkers on there. I don't have time to tell you about all of them. CrimeReport.nyc. And if you just want to go to iTunes and subscribe right away, The New York City Crime Report with Pat Dixon. Please go. I think you can listen to it here on the YouTube if you type it in, but like, yeah, you have a page. Crime it Crime makes Crime it look as if nobody listens to my show because nobody gets it that way. They all, they, nobody gets it on YouTube. They all get it on, you know, they all download it from my, uh, you know from what iTunes. You, what stuff. you gotta tell them is they can turn the speed that they can watch, uh, one point five or two times the speed like they can do with the podcast. People savor my podcast. They really? savor it. They <laughs> savor every word. <laughs> Thanks for having me, man. No problem, Pat. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks yeah. for uh, running overtime with us. And thank you, everybody, for tuning into the show. Remember... Nobody's watching. Oh, no, no, no. Nobody's listening. It's it, a- <laughs> they watch. <laughs> we got you for the saver part. Um, guys, make sure if you watch this on YouTube to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, tell us how much you liked or didn't like this stuff. Actually, save no. that don't like for yourself. No. Don't, don't tell us. Don't put it in the comment box. And thank you, everybody. If you are listening to this show, write it on, uh, subscribe to it on iTunes, Stitcher, 
Podbean, SoundCloud, wherever. We're about to be on Spotify and uh, iHeartRadio. So make sure if you listen to shows, you can check us out there. And huge shout outs to Green Roads World. We got you in the studio today for your CBD oil. And make sure everybody go check out uh, the greenroadsworld.com and get your CBD oil. Give yourself and your friend or family the gift of good health today. And use promo code on the bus for a 15% discount. You're doing your commercial now after three hours? At the, at end, the end, too, of the- yeah. <laughs> I guess you must have an ad that runs at the beginning. I didn't hear it or something. Okay, great. We're going to yes. do that one. Get your the, CBD oil. We're going to do that one in the beginning, too, uh, for the intro. Yeah. Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Amazon.com. Go check out that portal at onthebuspodcast.com. We all know your shop to do there. Go out and support this podcast. And that's it. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Thanks John. We're out.